if you're seed saving, you have to start thinking near the end of the summer which uh, fruit or vegetables that you want. You have to pick the healthier plant. But this one here is the one that I left for seed. And there we have it. That's going to be our seeds. Yeah, this zucchini, it weighed uh, seven and a quarter pounds. And <clears throat> it's kind of hard, has a hard shell. And uh, that's uh, because I let it fully mature. So the seeds should be just right for saving. So the seeds are going to be in the center section, so I'm going to remove the ends. And this is hard. Uh, the, sh the shell on it is real hard. So when you're cutting it, you got to be real careful because um, you're have to, having to apply a lot of pressure onto your knife. So some of it's still soft. It probably could have been cooked, but I think it's beyond the cooking stage. It's got a nice yellow color in there. When they're younger, they're white. Okay, now, to be able to handle this, I'm going to cut it into three sections. Going to lose a few seeds, cut them right through some. This is where you have to be. There, it's coming apart like a pumpkin. When I cut this open, I only let my knife go in through the the meat of the zook, and then I hit both sides. It saved me from cutting up a bunch of my seeds. So with these, I'll end up sharing them. I'll have enough that I'll share, and I always try to save seeds from the previous year and mix them with the new seeds. And I think that's what the seed companies all do when you uh, at the end of the year, they send all the packages of the seeds back to the manufacturer or the company that sells them. They have a seed lot number on the packages. And what they do is <clears throat> they will take the seeds and for the, pre for the next coming growing season, they'll take the seeds and they will sprout them. And if they can get 2% of the seeds to sprout, by law they're allowed to sell it as uh, packaged seeds. So 2% is not a very good uh, uh, percentage, but uh, most of my seeds will sprout, especially if they're fresh. To get the seeds out, you just grab this mass and you just squeeze and they will pop out of the the pulp that they're in. There's a lot of immature seeds, like right here. There's nothing in there. Those won't grow. But the fat ones, those are very healthy. They're ready to, ready to plant. And when you get all the seeds off, these are already wet from being in here or moist. So there's what you can do then is rinse all these off if you want. It's not necessary, but it would make them so that they won't be sticky. 
uh, when they dry they won't be sticky anyway. And these are about the size of pumpkin seeds. And of course, just like pumpkin seeds, squash seeds are edible. Uh, you don't want to eat seeds that you buy from a um, seed source because they you don't know where they came from and they may have a fungicide on them possibly even a pesticide on them and if they're pink they used uh, that pink uh, or the purplish violet colored um, neonicotinoid which is very toxic to bees and the seeds you're saving, when you squeeze this, you can feel the, the plump ones. And you just squeeze them out of that mass. Here's what I got from the one. And I'm going to rinse all the seeds. And you can see right here, these ones that are floating, these are immature seeds. These won't be the ones that will grow. There's nothing inside inside the seed itself. So these will be discarded. The seeds that you're saving, uh, they should be from a plant that was separated from other similar type so that they're not cross-pollinating and this is a zucchini. Zucchini will cross-pollinate with other squash and pumpkins. So when you select the fruit that you're going, or vegetable that you're going to keep, make sure that it is one that has been isolated from the other plants or else you may not know what you're going to end up with the next year but uh, it's been done for thousands of years and I think we need to keep doing this uh, for the biodiversity. The uh, number of plants, uh, food sources, fruits and vegetables that we have today equals what we had a, a hundred 200 years ago. <clears throat> However, the biodiversity has been really limited. Where we used to have hundreds, if not thousands, of varieties, we're down to maybe like four. And uh, that's not good, not good for our environment. So, the other thing is some of the foods that you're saving, the seeds, are coming from possibly your favorite uh, food and this is one way to guarantee that you can keep getting what you want or like. Here are the seeds that I'm drying. These have been left out overnight. Uh, they're dry on the outside. They're no longer sticking. I see one that was cut with a knife. That one would be edible. So we won't let that go to waste. Um, these seeds, because of how uh, thick they are, they're going to need between one and two weeks of airing out, sitting out here, drying. And once they're completely dried, then what I'll do is I'll put them in a sealed container and I'll use a mason jar. And for this volume, a pint should do it. And what you need to do when you store your seeds, label the type and variety and also the year. And properly stored, uh, these should be uh, good for up to 10 years and still be able to sprout. So you want to store these in a cool, uh, dry place. Of course, the mason jar being sealed should keep it dry and it should be out of the sunlight, so stored in the shade uh, in the pantry or somewhere that's uh, cool. Well, thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.